Welcome, welcome, welcome to Above Replacement Radio. I am your host, Chris Gianta. I might be becoming a bad baseball fan who can't enjoy the romantic things because of advanced statistics. 15 years from now, I want to be on the early baseball committee. Over there on the other side of the screen is Daniel Curran. I literally have the fan graphs hoodie. The baseball reference t-shirt is repping some stats, you know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily Hall of Fame. It's not necessarily above average, but we can guarantee you we are better than just the standard replacement level college sophomore. And welcome to Above Replacement Radio where we're talking baseball. Kind of whenever, I'm your host, Chris Gianta, over there. To my actual left, as you cannot see on YouTube, unfortunately, is Daniel Curran. How you doing, Daniel? Chris, I'm doing very well this week. We've had another fun week of Major League Baseball. We are in, what, week three now, I think? Um... You know, we're starting to really gather some narratives. We're starting to see some breakouts happening in real time. Uh, this is like this is well, probably one of my favorite parts of the season because, like, you know, the novelty of the new season is still there, but also it's like you know things are starting to be put into place because it's like you know when a guy has a good like first opening series, you can't really take it too seriously. Now, if guys are, you know, if, if guys are still performing well, if guys still have a you know, a 175 weighted runs created plus. They still have a, you know, a fit below two. Like, you can start really taking some note of that and having it mean something. Yeah, and with teams also, like, you know, it's... Every team has faced four different teams now. Like, mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, you know, this team looks great, but they were facing a last-place team. Um, Maybe even except for the Rays. Yeah, like, the and the Rays, you know, the, we'll get into the Rays, but, yeah, they're... They've had, obviously, an interesting season so far. But, yeah, things are starting to take shape a little bit more. Um, and, yeah, the novelty of the news, like, every every night I'm still excited to, you know, put on the MLB mm-hmm. app in the background of uh, whatever I'm doing uh, and just have it on and be like, oh, you know, I'm excited for this four starter who just has a particularly yep. high ground ball rate like yeah it's gonna be fun yeah, yeah. no i mean the, my i think one of my most relatable tweets this season was it, it was still opening weekend it was like peak baseball nerdism is being excited for 1 p.m then at 11 p.m the night before so you could watch joey wentz and jared schuster yeah because <laughs> you really want to see what that looks like yeah right 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 um yeah there's 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 a novelty there's fun stuff uh and new narratives being born yeah yeah, like there are two months where I don't mess around when it comes to baseball, and they are April and October. Yeah, yeah, October. Like May through September, you know, I will still watch in a very dedicated way, but April is like a different animal. Right, yeah, yeah. It's just. Where it's like any moment I'm not watching baseball feels like time wasted. <laughs> right, yeah. It's it's just, uh, there's, yeah, it. it's very, it's, it's a very exciting time to be a baseball fan yeah. when it's, when when it's brand new and stuff and also yeah like there's more you know at least in the northeast when you're at, not this week but it's better to be inside most of the time yeah um oh yeah my yeah i dropped my old uh vax <laughs> card i don't know how i don't know when that's gonna be relevant so I was gonna, it's gonna be a relic of the past <laughs> yeah. one day it's gonna like we're gonna put those in time capsules <laughs> um yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah so the uh, the Rays. So we we talked about the Rays uh, last episode. Thought you know maybe maybe they won't be undefeated the next time that we talk about them. And here they are. They're thirteen and zero. They just swept the Red Sox, who you know they're not uh, necessarily a favored playoff contender, but they are also not quite a basement dweller. They're, they are overwhelmingly the best team the Rays have faced this yes. year. <laughs> yes, but uh, the Rays didn't really have any problems against them. They had. Uh, they had one one run, one one run win, uh, and then you know, comfortably beat him. It was a one nothing game too. Yeah, or yeah, and comfortably beat them in the the three other games except there was a nine seven game, but they got yeah. out to a really early lead at that point. Um, when when is this gonna end? <laughs> uh, I think it might not honestly. Yeah. Like this this might be the one sixty two and O team. Yeah. Uh, they are the. They tied the 1987 Brewers, I believe it was, for like the longest win streak to start a season in the modern era. Uh, unfortunately, the Fred Dunlap St. Louis Maroons did go 20 and 0 to start the year. Yeah, yeah, which is insane. But yeah, anytime, anytime that you know your your competition is uh, pre-modern era baseball. Yeah. In not in not the national 
National League where like <laughs> <laughs> where like the National League was kind of a simulation of Major League Baseball, but there were, you know, as we talked about with Foolish Baseball uh, or Foolish Bailey or whatever, uh, you know, there were many weird leagues that were considered the major leagues. Yeah. Like uh, the the Union Association, Union Association, the Federal League, one of our favorites. Yes, Federal League. One the, I forgot to mention that one with Bailey. Uh, yeah, American course, Association. Who could forget the, you know the 1915 Chicago Whales, the champions. Exactly. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Les Mann. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Shout out to the Indianapolis Hoosiers. I think. Or, yeah, I think they were a Federal League team. But yeah. Shout out to Sounds them. Sounds about right. Those those are the most famous Hoosiers, <laughs> uh, in my mind. Yeah. But um, but yeah. So the Rays are thirteen and zero. Uh, I believe they. It's the third most. Um, it's the third most home runs a team has had in their first thirteen games of a season. And it is funny to go on Stathead and look and be like, "Wow, the two thousand Cardinals just went off." Yeah. Because <laughs> I think they had the lead. I I don't have the list pulled up right now, but uh, I believe, I believe the. Uh, the 2000 Cardinals had like the record for most home runs in 13. Uh, that sounds about right. I first. mean, it's the peak of the steroid era. It's the team with Mark McGuire on it. Right? Yeah. Mark McGuire, uh, Jim Edmonds apparently had like, uh, it was pre Pujols. Uh, yeah, it was pre Pujols. By a year. Jim Edmonds apparently had like a 1500 OPS in the first two, uh, in the first, uh, 14 games of the 2000 wow. season. Wow. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean the, where the Rays stand, it's still amazing what they're able to do. They still have five guys with uh, 30 – or five guys – well, four guys on the current roster. There's one they guy on the aisle. They have five guys. They have burgers and fries. <laughs> yeah. they, have four, they have four players with a 1,000 OPS and 30 or more plate appearances. What it's is crazy. It? It, it? Franco is one. I'm trying to try – I'm going to try to guess the four. Uh, it's Franco. Is it a Rosarena? Uh, I'm not looking. Um, no, it's not a Rosarena. Franco is one of them, though, right? Um, Franco is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Harold Ramirez. Yes. Harold Ramirez is one of them. Isaac Paredes. No. No. Okay. He's only at a. Oh, Brandon Lau. Brandon yeah. Lau absolutely has it. Uh, he's been going off, and. Yeah, the other one is Luke kind of Rayleigh. Weird. Uh, no, he's at nine ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Um, <laughs> the fourth guy on the Rays with a thousand OPS. That's not Franco Ramirez or Lau. It's a weird guy. I mean, the Rays are comprised of weird guys. <laughs> you, um, you could say he's similar to Brandon. Oh, it's Josh Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Ten ninety six OPS. Yeah, no, he's been going off. And then yeah, Yandy Diaz nine eighty eight. Uh, Isak <laughs> Paredes nine twenty five. Randy Rosarena nine twenty eight. Dude, every and every Luke wrong Rayleigh, guess I had was close yes. too, which is so funny. Yes, <laughs> like every wrong guess. No, that guy's at nine ninety seven. The <laughs> yeah. other guy's at nine twenty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they have the Blue Jays coming up. That's this is probably on the road too. On the road. So this is probably you would think this is where it's going to end. Yeah. Uh, however, it could just not. I don't yeah. know. It is wild to me that they are five games up in the division already. Right, right. Like, people talk about, you know, I've seen a lot of talk about, I mean, maybe this is just because we live in New England, but I've seen a lot of talk about, like, oh, my God, the Red Sox are eight games back of first. It's like, the Rays are five games up in first. Yeah. Like, the Red Sox are three games out of second. Yes, yes, they are. Like, that's not, you know, the end of the world. Eight games out of first isn't good, especially on April 14th, don't get me wrong, but the Rays are five games up in first on April 14th. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, and I I could see the Rays taking another sweep here based on the pitching matchups. They're facing Barrios, Kikuchi, and then Manoa, who Manoa has not got, gotten out to a good start at all. No. Um, meanwhile, the Rays have, you know, their <laughs> Drew, guys. What, Drew Rasmussen, Drew Rasmussen Shane McClanahan, and... Uh, Drew, Drew Rasmussen, TBD, Shane McClanahan. Yeah, so TBD will probably be, like, you know, the greatest pitcher that we've never heard of. It's t- it's TBD because we don't... There isn't a na- there isn't a government name on the guy. It's just, <laughs> a, it's just like, AE35. <laughs> AE it's like when Elon Musk named his kid, like... XA12 or something like that. Right, yeah. It just looks like a license plate. Yeah. 
Um, that's but what then he'll go out there and throw seven shutout innings with nine strikeouts and no walks. Yeah, it'll it'll just be yeah, it'll be a guy with like two first names. It'll be like Charles Frank, <laughs> and he's gonna he's he's gonna, he's gonna have a slider with like twenty six inches of run. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, uh, his his arm will run out of juice by the middle of twenty twenty four. Yeah, but we're gonna be amazed at what For he does for the rest of time too. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but we're gonna we're gonna enjoy him while we have him. Yeah, listen, Rays pitchers are here for a good time, not a long time. Exactly, that's just, that's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but yeah, so so they got the Blue Jays, and then they go right back to the basement with Cincinnati, uh, and then Chicago. Uh, at home after that, and then Houston. So, you know, Blue Jays, White Sox, and Houston are all, you know, probably competing for playoff spots this year. Mm-hmm. Um, White Sox are the lowest on that list, but yeah. Um, it'll be exciting. I'm really excited to watch the Rays and Blue Jays. Yeah. Here's my question is like, you know, I 13 games into a season, I'm never really willing to change my predictions on what the season will look like. Yeah. What are you kind of... What might you be willing to change based off of what the Rays are doing? I mean, it's, I've definitely considered like, okay, they're up, they're you know, they're winning all these games. Like, you know, no one else in the in the AL East is really like blowing me away. The Yankees, I I think, are like eight and five. The Blue Jays are probably around the same place. Yeah. Um. So like, I'm not you know particularly moved, but I can't. I don't know. I can't change a prediction on April fourteenth. Like, yeah, the Rays could have one week where they go two and five. And the Blue Jays could be like, yeah, or the Yankees could be like, yeah, we're gonna go six and zero actually. And then it's like, well, why would I ever change my prediction now? Right, and yeah, like we we talked about it earlier. You know, the Rays. If you looked at the schedule, you'd expect like, you know, based off of the first thirteen games, you'd expect like nine and four, ten and three ish. Mm-hmm. You know, they but they happen to do a little, a little bit better than that than that. But yeah, they could uh, you know, they could certainly underperform over the over the course of the season and and whatnot. But yeah, like what, what's making me optimistic about the Rays is everything they needed to do to make the jump so far that's happening. I don't, I don't think there's anything. I think the guys that are supposed to do well are just doing especially well. Like uh, Brandon Lau, I, I yeah. talked about him like there's potential for a bounce back and he's having a mega bounce back so far with a career two, year even. Yeah, a, a 260 OP, OPS plus, you know, in the granted 13 games. And then Wander Franco like, oh, you know, he's going to have a bounce back. He's already at I think one win one win above replacement uh in the first 13 games, which is pretty wild, 1048 yeah. OPS. I think there's two position players in the league that are above one at this point. Right, and then you're like, okay, and the both of them are playing against each other this weekend. Oh no, there's three. Uh, Luis Robert, Luis Robert's been killing it on defense, by the way. Um, yeah, that's he's at one point oh. Yeah, he's been he's been really uh, racking up the uh, he's he that maybe this is his breakout. I think he, I think he has the highest defensive runs above average in the league. No, he doesn't. He's third. Uh, Joey Weimer of the Brewers is on the on the top of that list, and then Wilson Contreras is number two, except Wilson Contreras has a 35 weighted runs created plus. Ah, even yeah. with Even with a 11% walk rate. Dang. Yeah. Get babbipped, I guess. Uh, 212. Yeah, sure. Or gets struck out all the time. Nope, not even 17.4%. That's weird. Yeah. Um, Mystery. It, he just well, I mean, his his ISO is o twenty four, and guess. his batting average is one seventy one. So sounds sounds right. Yeah. But yeah, with the Rays, um, yeah. So everything that needed to go for them, what needed to go well for them, is going well. And yeah, you and w- what was expected out of the Rays is like, oh, that rotation looks really good, and so far it's looking really good. You know, Drew Rasmussen. Uh, in his two starts so far, uh, you know, 13 scoreless innings, 15 strikeouts, no walks. Uh, Jeffrey Springs, he just allowed his first run of the year, uh, 16 innings, one run. Did he leave with an injury? 24 strikeouts and four walks. Is is he? I, he left, like, weirdly early in the game. I wasn't able to watch because it was Thursday, which is, like, my busiest day of the week. But I noticed he left with, like, like early in the game. I think I saw training staffs out. Uh, looks like... No, no IL announcement yet. Okay. Eflin's on the IL currently. Oh man, um, that sucks. And then uh, Shane McClanahan, seventeen innings, one five nine ERA. Yeah. You know, we, 
you expect good things from him. But yeah, everything that you would expect to go well is going well and then some for the Rays. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all working out. Um, the guys that are supposed to be doing well are doing well, and the guys that aren't supposed to be doing well are also doing pretty well. Absolutely. Um, you know what sucks? You know who's not doing well? Uh, who's not doing well? Jonathan Aranda. Oh yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that's that's that might be my number one miss thus far. Not because he's been particularly bad. Like there are probably worse guys that I've picked, but it's like every single dude on the Rays is outperforming. And then well, what is Aranda at? Has he even played? Uh, I don't think he's played. Yeah, it's unfortunate. They probably put him in the minors for now. Yeah, um, he was only like twenty three, so it doesn't make sense. The Rays was one of my uh, safer picks that I made. What was it? <laughs> it was Jeffrey Springs. Oh yeah, I mean. He's been one of the best pitchers in the league. He's been one of the best pitchers in the league, but yeah. So, like, it is a good pick, objectively. Yeah. I did pick him after 130 innings of sub-2-5 ERA ball. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, anything more on the Rays? Um, I mean, not really. I mean, I think this is going to be the best competition they've faced. Pretty clearly, the Blue Jays on the road. Um, The Blue Jays have new uh, ballpark uh, dimensions. And the the colors are, are throwing yeah, me off. Yeah, they're weird. Yeah, it's but like... I, also, Kevin Kiermeyer in the Blue Jays outfield, like at, at Rogers Center, but for the Blue Jays, that throws me off. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like it should... It, you know, I'm I'm in I'm in I'm in 2018. Yeah. Kevin Pillar should be out there. Robbing did home you runs. Uh, did you see how close the bullpens are to the fans? Yeah, that video. I think Petriello put it out. Yeah, or he either put it out or like retweeted it, but like. If you're a fan and you're in the first row right behind either bullpen, you are, you can you can literally reach out and touch the player's arm. Yeah, that's like you can a hundred percent do that. Yeah, it's interesting. It luckily, is crazy. Luckily, they built it in Canada, so <laughs> yes, everyone's going to keep their personal space. Yeah, it don't it don't don't watch the 2016 AL Wild Card game and and focus on Hyunsoo Kim the entire time. Just remember it's in Canada and no one is mean. Yeah, they're like, oh, 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 you're doing something. Uh, don't let me get in the way. I'm sorry. Don't let me throw my beer on the field at you. Yeah. <laughs> while you're trying to catch a fly ball. Yes, exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it. You know, fitting the stereotype for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Toronto. Yeah, it, the the color schemes. Like, I'm gonna have to get used to them. I don't hate them. It's just I have to get used to them. Like, dark... I definitely want to go see it for myself in person. It looks yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, the dark blue. What are their dimensions now? Um, it, the walls are like shorter and more in, not uh, like not like a drastic amount. I think there's like twenty like batted balls that would have been home runs last year but weren't. Ah. Uh, yeah. So it's definitely not. I mean, like the most extreme dimension change we've seen in recent history has undoubtedly been in Baltimore last year. It's mm-hmm. not going to be to that extent, but it'll probably aid a a Blue Jays offense that is already probably the strongest point of its team. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, one every, one out of every eight games, they'll have one that wouldn't have gone last year. Exactly. Or so, um, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, gotta love that. So, so yeah, they they will be facing the Rays, trying to uh, get rid of the undefeated streak so far. Um, but yeah, uh, a team that might be coming to Major League Baseball is a team out of Salt Lake City. Yeah. Uh, There was news about efforts for expansion, which would be the first time since 1998 when the Rays were introduced to the league, um, along with the Diamondbacks. But, yeah, it would be the first time in in 30 years there would be expansion. Or, yeah, I don't know, 25 years, but Mm -hmm. granted it wouldn't be for a few years that they uh, would get this team in. What are your thoughts on uh, on this uh, news here? It's crazy because there have been so many like potential cities for expansion over the last decade or so where it's like Portland, Las Vegas, Charlotte, Montreal. Salt Lake City has never really been mentioned. Yeah. Uh, my initial thoughts is like, do they have the populace to support a Major League Baseball team? But the... the, the, the benefit of that is that there's no real teams in the area so there's there's definitely a good chance a lot of the residents don't already have a team but you know like you see those mlb maps where it's like where all the teams are and there's nothing in like the you know the utah area uh it's like basically the rockies and mariners have their own entire territories along with the blue jays because they have you know all of canada but 
I don't know. Salt Lake City has a population of 200,000, just for reference. Oakland has a population more than double that. Um, and, you know, we see the crowds that they draw. Um, the elevation is also going to be a major factor there, you know, yeah. the same way that it is in Colorado. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I just looked it up on my computer. Yeah, Denver's only like 1,000 feet higher uh, than, uh, than it is in Salt Lake City. So, yeah, I mean, it would be another... <laughs> I can't wait. St. Petersburg has a larger population, like the Florida city, than Salt Lake City. Uh, I don't know that that's only you know the city. There's obviously like a lot of other places nearby. Uh, Utah as a whole, you know that the whole state is going to be rallying around the team. Yeah. Um, and you know there will be plenty of other surrounding areas. But my initial thought is like, okay, are we sure this city has the populace to support a major league baseball franchise? Because they obviously do have an NBA team. But NBA is so different, man. Like, those stadiums don't require as many people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't be... So, I Initially, you know, obviously, there we have to go so far down the road for this to actually happen. Yeah. Um, you know, they have to build a stadium. They have to, you know, do an expansion draft and name the team and everything and actually, you know, like, do a ton of other logistics things. So, if this were to come into effect, it will not be for probably at least like a half decade right yeah it, yeah it, it's kind of just a thing that like the the words salt lake city were said and you yeah. know now now it's a new now it's a new segment they have a they have a minor league team i wonder how they do in uh attendance the salt lake city is bees. It bees yeah yeah it's the angels triple a um yeah so so yeah uh yeah salt lake city <laughs> is rank- int- they ranked 18th in in MILB attendance, which is not bad. I mean, that is all of MI, MILB. Yeah, all of um, MILB is like, what, 80, 90 teams? Yeah, so they are up there. It's uh, 120. Yeah, okay, so that's top 18th, yeah. Dayton, top the 15%-ish. Dayton is number one. Uh, yeah. I right. mean, also, yeah. I mean, Hartford's above that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, Hartford, Hartford, Hartford is sixteenth. Connecticut is densely populated, is. and there's also no, you know, there's nothing in the state that's, you know, a yeah. major league team. Just for just for reference, so the Salt Lake Bees are at number eighteen for minor league attendance last year, and it's total attendance. It's not like percent of, you know, of t- of seats that were sold. Um, it's, you know, total tickets sold. People yep. walk through the door. Number seventeen is the Iowa Cubs. Number 19 is the Toledo Mudheads, a team that I saw play last year. Um, so that's kind of where they're at. Yeah. Interesting, for sure. Uh, What's the Red Sox yeah, number six? I can't, I can't wait for the 2060 Hall of Fame ballot where we have to discuss some guys. OPS Plus. Oh, my God. OPS Plus oh my with God. the Salt Lake City. Yeah, well, hopefully by 2060 people understand that, that are voting. Yeah, no. OPS Plus will be outdated by then, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, facts. Um, it's like, dude, you're seriously using OPS Plus. What is it, 2020? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go back, go back on your MacBook. Dude, go, yeah, man. dude, you can enjoy your back of the baseball card stats. I'm going with the new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, go pull up baseball reference on a PC <laughs> and not and not through the air where I'm yeah. where I'm s- scrolling through in the air. Yeah, I, where I don't have a baseball savant. A baseball savant chip in me, so I just see it when I close my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, Salt Lake City, it, it's an interesting city. One city you did mention, uh, Nashville. Nashville. Yeah, I did not. I forgot to mention Nashville, and that's also one. They were, I think, fourth in minor league attendance last year. So. Yeah, Nashville, I think, yeah, that that would be a city. Yeah. That I, would that would be a lot of fun. I feel like you hear more and more about people like visiting Nashville. I've definitely heard a lot more about it in the last five or so years. Yeah, like... It's. I feel like it's sort of growing. I don't. I don't have any metrics beyond. I know. Beyond yeah. That. No. I just. <laughs> I just. I got the feel for it. <laughs> I got the feel I, for I'm, it. I'm 100 percent going off the eye test. Yeah. For that one. I know it sucks, but. <laughs> yeah. Their their uh, X population right now yeah. is a uh, 95th percentile. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, you know, their their tourism plus is at 127 actually. 
Y- yes. <laughs> it's, it's quite up there. Which leads, which is fifth in metropolises in the last five years behind only New York City, <laughs> Chicago, Los Angeles, <laughs> and, I don't Miami. Know, and Miami. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that, that's, that's a bit of sh- spicy news for us. Yeah. Uh, an interesting... An interesting thing where yeah maybe maybe it's, maybe it's nothing but maybe it's maybe it's something there's always that always that uh always the idea of that um anything more on the uh, expansion no i don't think so i don't really know i mean this is obviously something that won't come to fruition for a long time if it even does it's incredibly possible it doesn't and you know a year from now we'll, we'll be like to remember that time there was gonna be a team in salt lake city yeah yeah how stupid would that have been yeah and uh only th- only thing I might have to add is like this. It would be currently we're in the longest stretch without expansion since like the That's true. since like the nineteen uh, sixties when I think they had sixteen teams forever, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then I think they added like thirty well, is like a nice twins. round number. They have you know six divisions, three teams. Also, adding one expansion team would be terrible. That would suck so. Yeah, bad. yeah. No, especially for a sport that's played every day. Yeah. Yeah, they they would need to add a. Second Imagine team. like on opening day being the one team that's off. Oh my god, that would be the worst. <laughs> yeah, no, because would... like, how are you supposed to do a whole series like that? Right. You know, yeah. like like the NHL had thirty one teams for a while, but they can survive like that. A because not you know teams don't play every night, and B because you know you play one team, then you go play another team, then you go play another team. Baseball, it's three game series. You'd have to you'd be off for an entire week. Yeah. So I think the. Salt Lake City would be added under the condition that another team would be yeah, added. Yeah, hundred percent. There's no way. Because in '98, the Rays and the Diamondbacks were added. In '93, the Marlins and, and the, the Rockies, Rockies were added. Um, and then I think in '77, four teams were added. Yeah, the Royals, Mariners. Um, uh, no, the Padres, Royals, Padres Mariners, were '69. Pod- Astros? No, the Astros would have been before then. Um, oh my God! What teams were added in '77? <laughs> Mariners. Mariners Royals. Uh Expos? Expos, right? Expos. Oh yeah, yeah. Expos and, and would it be the Brewers? No. Brewers? The, Bre- the Brewers were seventy. Because uh, sixty nine yeah. was the pilots and they moved. It was the Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> um The yeah. Rangers the Rangers maybe? No, nah, Rangers were uh I think in the sixties. Okay. Unless I'm wrong about that. Um yeah, now it's now I now we have to know. Yeah, we need uh Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Yeah. Canada. So Blue Jays, Expos, Royals, uh and Mariners were added in 77. Yeah. So the yeah, the Rangers were added in 61 and I think the Twins were added in 61. Well, they be um, well. They went from well. I mean, they were the Senators beforehand. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, the Astros were added in sixty one. Astros were added in sixty one. So that was the last time it had been that long since since expansion. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, the AL and NL each had eight teams for like sixty years, and then uh, and then they started adding, and is it progressed to a thirty team league up until nineteen ninety eight, um, when they finally added the uh, Rays and Diamondbacks, and yeah. This would be the first time in over a quarter century yeah. that uh, it would be that there would be a new team. So yeah, there's hasn't been expansion in our lifetimes. We can tell you that, um, which would be yeah, it, it would be nice to uh, maybe not nice but interesting to say the le- to say the least. Um, anyway, uh, do we want to talk about what, what's been concerning you about the Tigers? Uh, yeah, well the Tigers are th- what three and. Nine right now, um, and it's been a brutal week for them. A, they got swept by the Red Sox, uh, you know, a team that isn't, you know, impressing too many people, especially this week. Yeah. Um, and this series against the Blue Jays was just brutal. They did win last night. They snuck out with a 3-1 to one win. Uh, but, I mean, it was an absolute yikes for them in, uh, what was it, Tuesday's game where they – they came into the ninth inning with a two-run lead. They blew that lead and then got walked off in extras. Mm-hmm. And AJ Hinch had a press conference after the game where you could just tell he was miserable. Like he wanted nothing to do with being there. He just hated that roster, hated that team. Uh, and then Wednesday they did win, but uh, Javier Baez, who is you know kind of the 
I mean, I guess the most valuable player on the team, but also the most expensive player on the team. Yeah. Uh, by a long shot, he has ninety-eight million dollars left on his deal after this year. Yeah. Um, and he has a negative nine weighted runs created plus this season. Mm. He struggled last year as well. And last night, he forgot how many outs there were when he was on the bases and got thrown out at second on a routine fly ball. Yeah. Uh, and AJ Hinch ended up taking him out of the game right after that, which like you don't see that often anymore. Yeah, right. Um, especially with a guy like him, uh, in a game that you know that you're trying to win. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I can't imagine what's going through AJ Hinch's mind these days. Yeah. Because I mean, he had, you know, he was going to be in the talk of like the greatest managers of all time. Like he was going to be the guy that was there during a dynasty. He was going to be a Hall of Famer. You know, he would pretty much have two World Series by now. I don't see any reason to believe he would have, you know. Uh, not won the 2022 World Series if, you know, Dusty did. Um, instead, they got caught cheating, and now he's in Detroit. Yeah. Managing, managing just the most, I mean, let's let's be honest, boring team. Yeah, they're, they're right? not exciting. I mean, they have one of the worst offenses in baseball. It also just sucks that, like, he hasn't really, every time he's been given something good, it hasn't gone right. Like, look how many, like, Spencer Turnbull threw a no-hitter and was looking like a promising pitcher. He gets Tommy John surgery. Casey Mize looked promising in parts of 2021. He gets Tommy John surgery. Targ Scooble has really good strikeout-to-walk numbers at the beginning of 2022. He gets Tommy John surgery. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you know, they had they have an interesting group of young pitchers. The problem is all of them got Tommy John surgery. Uh, the offense has been historically bad for about, like, four years now, right? I mean, 2019 and 22 are both god awful and 2023 so far has been the same javier baez is just looks so uncomfortable up there like if you just watch his at bats like i mean we we know that javier baez has always been a a free swinger uh but it's been it feels like it's been at another level this year I, i could check the uh the plate discipline metrics i guess but i don't know he just looks lost at the plate uh i don't even i think he i don't think he has a home run this year um He's just for reference. He is currently slashing one twenty two, one eighty two, one forty six, uh, which is just dreadful. Um, he actually is striking out a lot less, so I guess I am correct. I guess I am wrong on that, but I don't yeah. know. He just looks a lot worse. He has a forty nine percent outside swing percentage, which is the highest of his career. Although his out of zone contact percent is pretty high this year. But even then, I mean, he's probably not making great contact out of the zone. Yeah, and I know, like you know, looking for uh, looking for slightly alar- alarming players. Not that uh, bias is mine today, but I was hoping he wasn't. But uh, but you know, it feels it, al- it almost expected number. I, I don't, at this point, it almost feels like it's like yeah, dude, you can't put Javier Baez there. Like I did last year. Yeah, it's uh, it's all blue right now. Yeah. Um, you know, his expected WOBA is third percentile. Expected slugging is first percentile. Uh, he hasn't had a barrel yet out of th- in 33 batted balls. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, and, and that's that's a guy who's a power hitter uh, or relies on power more for his offense than, uh, than usual. You know, when he's doing well, he's getting extra base hits. He's not necessarily a guy, you know, line, consistent line drives, putting it through holes and whatnot. But, yeah, uh, and to, to add to your point of – Hinch getting good things and then it just not working. Like, yeah, the the Mize Turnbull and Scooball all getting Tommy John surgery. I mean, that's that's really horrible for a yeah. franchise. But then also like, there's a reason why we got about why we got excited about the Tigers late 2021 because they were into 2022. Yeah, they were 500 for the last 80 percent of the 2021 season, and they picked up an ace pitcher and a bona fide shortstop. Yeah, so they they acquired. Eduardo Rodriguez, who, yeah, like they, they, uh, you know, Eduardo Rodriguez, if you just looked at his ERA in 2021, you would think, oh, that's not a great performer, but he, he was a really good pitcher in 2021. He just had the worst de- infield defense behind him. Um, and he quite literally been, was when, when he signed was like, you need to get me a shortstop. Yeah. And they, they got Javier Baez and, uh, with R- Rodriguez, you know, they got, they got, the Tigers got him and his strikeouts per nine went from 10.6 to 7.1. And then he had the, 
you know, interesting restricted list stint where, you know, he was only able to throw 91 innings last year. So far this year is at a 4.50 ERA, 5.64 FIP. And then, yeah, with Baez, he was a, a below average offensive performer last year. Um, that's a guy who they signed for $22 million a year over, over uh, or $23 million a year over six years. Uh, and, you know, obviously this scene is not good. Uh, it doesn't show a lot for the Tigers in general. So, and, and, and then, yeah, a, a good thing happened last year. They have Spencer Torkelson come up, a top five prospect, their number one, the number one overall draft pick from 2020. 2020. And uh, he struggles really badly, more than any high-profile rookie out there by by a long stretch, because uh, he got you know J Rod and Michael Harris just absolutely killing it. Adley Rutschman, Bobby, even Bobby Witt was pretty good, um, but Spencer Torgelson was nowhere near them. Um, and yeah, that'll probably change. But the Tigers just have been; they were expected to sort of break out last year, in, in a in a sense it went the opposite direction they wanted it to. And, uh, it, it, there's no hope. There's no signs pointing toward them, you know, achieving what they wanted to achieve before. Um, yeah, it just doesn't like, yeah, the franchise as a whole has just gone. It's not going in the, in the direction they want it to right now. No, not at all. Um, and it's, it's sad. I mean, I wish, I mean, especially because this team has been rebuilding for how many years now? Uh, Basically, since like... 27, 2016? Yeah, something like that, feels like, right? Right, yeah. For like the entire length of this Miguel Cabrera contract, they've been trying to rebuild. Yeah, ever since, yeah, ever since the Price, Verlander, Scherzer, or yeah. Yeah, yeah it just hasn't been the same. Ever since that rotation was there... um. You know, they made the playoffs, they got swept, you know, had a few disappointing playoff runs, you know, four years in a row they made, they won the, yeah, four years in a row they won the division and, um, you know, didn't win the World Series, uh, kind of rebuilt it and, or rebuilt mm-hmm. and it hasn't quite worked out quite yet. Um, and there's no signs pointing it, pointing toward it, redirecting anytime soon. What are the odds... The buy so the Baez contract ends after the twenty twenty seven season. He is owed twenty four million in twenty twenty seven. There's no options. Uh, he can he can opt out after twenty twenty three. Part of me almost wonders what if he does. Yeah, <laughs> like would he leave all that money on the table to get out of out of Detroit, where clearly it's taken an effect on him as a player. Yeah, yeah. What if like... he does? What if he leaves all that money on the table to get significantly less to try to revive his career? That would be. The Tigers' dream. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Yeah, no, I don't think it would happen either. But hypothetically, but like, talking in hypothetical, but like you know, I think I'd have a little more sympathy for him than anyone else who opts out in that situation. Hypothetically, he could, you know, take a minor league deal with the A's. This is not going to happen. But hypothetically, <laughs> he goes, he hits the free agent market at age thirty. He takes like a one-year flyer deal. Uh, he does really well there, and then maybe he gets like another four or five-year deal. Yeah, <laughs> at age thirty. Heading in, into his age thirty two season, yeah, it won't happen because he would be leaving ninety eight million dollars uh, on the table. Yes, yeah, yeah, which is, I mean, that's life changing money. It's intergenerational wealth. Um, yeah. yeah. What are the odds? Anyway, I, I can almost certainly tell you he's not making it to the end of that deal because he's going probably going to get released in like May of twenty twenty seven. What are the odds he even makes it to twenty twenty seven on the Tigers? Because I'm sure. This, like Scott Harris probably just wants to trade him. Yeah. But also who's gonna take that? Yeah, I don't <laughs> who's know. Who's going to take that? <clears throat> like you're gonna have to trade like a Green or a Torkelson if you're going to attach bias to that. Yeah, right. Which I mean, is so sad because then you're you're rebuilding the rebuild. I could see hypothetically like he gets on some random hot streak in twenty twenty six and and they just they they like eat half his contract and trade him in his like age 33 season but uh but yeah you know who knows i mean the miguel cabrera has made it this far albeit he's a way more integral part of the tigers organization and you know historically but you know he's made it through his age 40 ish season or whatever um so yeah who knows maybe Baez 
I I feel I'm st- there's still faith for me that he turns it around at some point. It's just I hope it so. looks really bad right now. I hope so. I mean, you can't have a negative nine weighted runs created plus forever, right? Yeah, and and that's the thing was was like uh, I didn't put him as slightly alarming today, but I feel like I feel like he'll always be a candidate for either slightly alarming or how, how about, about that? that? Because so he you look just, at Bias, man. He has a one ten OPS plus this week. Well, <laughs> no, I, I get it though. I get it. Though. He he goes on he he goes he goes on hot streaks and he goes on really cold streaks. He can be yeah. the best player in the league or he can be the worst offensive player in the he league. He went through all of it with the Mets in like a month. Yes, he did. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah, like I think he was. He might have been like an ARR comeback special or something mm-hmm. that year. Yeah. But um. But yeah, like he he just had he he would just have random random spurts of excellence. That's kind of what his career is: random spurts of excellence, and then random uh, random spurts of just being the worst hitter in baseball. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like yeah, like you know he had he had this stretch in 2021 i'm looking now where with the mets he had like a 1203 ops in 12 games yeah he was i think he was a uh, yeah it's like there's a reason why he got the contract he did he wasn't when 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 he got the contract it wasn't like oh this guy's overpaid no it wasn't at all and it was like oh good for the tigers like they just got their guy yeah exactly exactly yeah it just hasn't been like that nope 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 um all right. So uh yeah, now we can get into players to highlight where we are uh going to be talking about players and subjects. Or well, we'll start with uh our first segment where we will be talking about players and subjects that are doing very well to start the year. Um now it is time for our April 14, 2023 edition of how about that um who do you got for us today i'm talking about a guy that i've kind of been following throughout this season and i've seen this you know this stretch happen in real time and let me tell you it's been a pleasure watching this guy just rake i'm talking about matt chapman who is uh the major league leader in f4 currently at 1.2 uh, he is slashing 489 538 851 for a 1390 ops and a 288 weighted runs created plus his expected slugging actually indicates he's been unlucky. His expected slugging is 862, 11 points above his actual slugging, which is just insane. He currently leads all qualifiers in average exit velocity at 98.8 uh, degree or miles per hour. Uh, barrels per plate appearance, 23.1% of his plate appearance end in barreled batted balls. That is crazy. Uh, he also leads in slugging, OPS, and weighted runs created plus. In 11 plate appearances ending on changeups, he is hitting 545 and slugging 909. Among the 403 hitters to have at least 10 plate appearances end against any pitch, Chapman against changeups is ranked number one in run value per 100 at 18.3. That means he's only for he's only seen twenty one changeups, but on average, for every one hundred changeups he would be seeing, with the results he's put out so far, he would be producing about eighteen point three runs for his team. That ranks number one out of over four hundred. Uh, he also has a five point three uh, run value per hundred against fastballs, which is still really good, even though it's miles below eighteen. Six point one against sliders, four point eight against sinkers all in at least nine plate appearances. So there is nothing you could safely throw this guy right now. Uh, his lowest career strikeout rate in a season before this year was twenty nine or 21.9%. And in 2023, it is at 19.2%. He is under 20% for the first time right now. And that is thanks to his zone contact rate. His career highest zone contact rate entering this year was 86.4%. That was in 2018. Currently, it is at... 91.1%. So over 90% of the time he's making contact with a pitch he swings at in the strike zone. Uh that is actually like not league leading. League leading is usually around like 96%, which is crazy, but for a guy, you know, like Matt Chapman, he's making major improvements uh seeing the ball in the zone. Uh yeah, Matt Chapman. How about that? Um Yeah, yeah, he uh yeah, he's really been 
we have an we have an F four league. Yeah. Dan, he's been carrying uh, Daniel's team to yep. uh, second place. Second place right now. Um, but yeah, hitting all the pitches very well. Mm-hmm. Um, anything that he sees, he's crushing. Every so. day I check the blue jersey, it's like, oh my god, he went two for three again. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, all right. So, uh, my, how about that is, um, you know, someone who we've been kind of waiting on and maybe, maybe this is when he's gonna, maybe, maybe we're finally seeing some success. Maybe he can drag it out for a a longer term scale. I'm talking about Jared Jared Kelnick. Kelnick. Uh, this season he is hitting 351 with an 1117 OPS, and in his last seven games particularly, he is hitting 458 with a 1477 OPS. Uh, he has hit a homer in each of the Mariners' last three games. Uh, also, overall this season, his average exit velocity is 94.4 miles per hour. Hard hit rate is 61.5%. Barrel rate is 23.1%, and sweet spot rate is 38.5%. You know that sweet spot rate. 5.5 percentage points above average about um, along with that Jared Kelnick's average exit velocity, hard hit rate, barrel rate, and expected batting average are all 93rd percentile or higher. Uh, his expected slugging and expected Woba are both in the 99th percentile. Uh, you know, it is a small sample size, but his strikeout rate, uh, whiff rate, chase rate are all career lows and his walk rate is at a career high, which is always a very good sign. It'll always improve your offensive numbers when you're striking out less and you're walking more. Um, we see that with pitchers. I mean, that's that's one of the key things we look at. Uh, and uh, just in terms of particular uh, particular pitches he's seen and doing well against, he's particularly crushing uh, general fastballs, whether it be four-seamers, sinkers, cutters, uh, or no, not split fingers, but yeah, four seamers, sinkers, cutters, and and uh, two seamers, two seamers, which is which, basically sinkers. Which is sink. They don't. It's weird. It they they combine the two now. Yeah. Um. So he's crushing those types of pitches. Uh, he is slugging one thousand against them with an eleven eighty five expected slugging against them. Out of one hundred fifty eight hitters to see ninety plus fastballs this year, uh, his expected slugging is the highest uh, on general fastballs. So. Jared Kelnick, based on what I'm seeing so far, earning A. Yes, sir. How about that? Is this the year? Is the, it, it could be the year. Could hey, be the he's year. only he's only 23, so <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, we could see it. Uh, finally, this That'd we've be been waiting for so, so long. So huge for the Mariners. It would be. No, I mean, imagine him and J Rod are both really good. Like the fact that J Rod's really good is yeah. already a bonus. Like if he hasn't been great this year, obviously. I mean, he, it's only April fourteenth. Yeah, um, yeah. And he's hitting his first home run last year until May first. So true. He's just not an April guy. No, he really isn't. That's and that's okay. That's okay. You know, it's okay. Usually, usually I'm not crazy in April because everyone thinks it's spring and then it's not. But this year it actually. Yeah. Well, shout out to you know the global warming out there. Yeah, and shout out to global warming, like <laughs> keeping it cool when it's fifty five degrees two weeks from now. Yeah, um, <laughs> like just, just like just just you know, it's gonna be like all you thought. Yeah, it's like you, oh, know, just, you know, for those conspiracy theorists out there, it's like we're gonna make it fifty five. Yes, we're gonna give you accept- acceptable April weather in April. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't wait for my fellow deniers out there. I can't wait for yeah, the, like the feel like temperature to be at like forty eight. The winds just chapping my lips. Yep. That's that's my April twenty seventh weather, but yeah, today it's going to be ninety degrees, which is awesome, wild, great, <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, so now we go into players or subjects that have been underperforming for our Mon- or Friday, April 14, twenty twenty three edition of slightly alarming. Uh, who do you have for us today? I'm staying with the same team. Uh, I'm talking about a guy that you mentioned earlier. I'm. Uh, I'm going with Alec Manoa for my slightly alarming. After three starts and 14.2 innings pitched, he is a 4.91 ERA, a 7.02 FIP, and a 7.98 XERA. It just keeps getting worse. He is in the bottom 30th percentile in hard hit rate, expected ERA slash expected WOBA, expected batting average, expected slugging, barrel percent, strikeout percent, and walk rate. Essentially what that means is that he's not striking guys out like he used to, he's walking more people than he used to, and he's giving up hard contact. There's not really, 
you know, much else you can do to be redeeming as a pitcher if you're not doing those three things. Uh, and here's where my problem lies. In 2022, Manoa threw his four-seamer 8% more than the next, you know, most pitch uh, in his repertoire. But this year, he is throwing both his sinker and his slider slightly more. And it's not like a, a, a drastic uh, difference between the two. I think he's thrown like eight more of each pitch. Let me let me get the exact metrics um, real quick, just so I have that. He has thrown 85 sinkers, 83 slide, 83 sinkers. No wait, <laughs> sorry, 85 sinkers, 83 sliders, and 78 four seamers. But still, he threw the four seamer eight percent more last year, and it's kind of even this year with it being his third most used pitched. Uh, his sinker, which is now his most used pitched has an average launch angle of 14 degrees and a ground ball rate of 28.6%. Uh, his overall ground ball rate has dropped 6% since last year. Now, let me explain something to those of you who are new, because I've explained this concept a lot on this show. But when you throw a sinker, you're throwing a pitch that is relatively easy to hit. You're not going to get a lot of strikeouts on sinkers. Almost nobody does. The reason you throw the sinkers is because you get a lot of ground balls against them. The way the downward move movement works it gets hitters to you know hit the top of the ball a lot so the, the best sinker pitchers get around like 80 percent ground balls on their sinkers it's crazy like clay holmes for amber valdez the average sinker ground ball rate is probably around like 50 percent if you're around like you know 40 percent you're you're all right but 28.6 percent is a disaster if that's your most used pitched it's never going to go well for you. That is not a good sign. Uh, and I also just overall don't understand why at this point in Alec Manoa's career we're trying to, you know, reinvent him as a sinker ball pitcher. You know, he's not like he's losing miles per hour off of his fastball, especially in April. Like, he's only at one mile per hour down, but it's April, so it'll probably go up. That's kind of just how it works. Um you know, like we're sa like we're sacrificing Alec Manoa's fastball, which is his best pitch last year, so that he can throw a pitch that's easy to hit that he's not getting the results on. Uh, for reference, hitters are uh, are hitting uh, it's 292 against his sinker this year with a 417 slugging. They have an expected batting average of 372 and an expected slugging of 746. Meanwhile, he hitters are hitting and slugging 071 against his fastball. So he's sacrificing his fastball for a not good pitch, and the fastball that he's throwing is still the best pitch. So I don't really understand what the logic is behind that, but I would like to see Alec Manoa go back to his regular pitch repertoire for right now. Yeah, Alec Manoa. Slightly alarming. Yeah, if you heard, uh, the sinker is doesn't get a lot of swings and misses. So when you're so when you're tweeting out uh, Bruce Dark Gratterall video, uh, <laughs> you know. It's rarely ever a swing and miss. It's always just a called strike. Oh, oh. Uh, and, yeah. I don't know. And people are like, how do people hit this? So I don't know how people hit this. But, but they, they do. do. <laughs> they do. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, yeah, so so that's the sinker. You're supposed to get ground balls on it. Although, I understand that the two-seamer and the sinker have been combined. So a lot of sinkers... A lot of, you know, stat cast sinkers look a lot different. Some of them are more, you know, 12-6-ish, not like a 12-6 curveball, but mm -hmm. more vertical drop. And some of them are, you know, have a lot more run um, and not necessarily a combination of the two. All right. So my slightly alarming uh, shout out to um, not that not that he drove my research, but he mentioned him yesterday and then I saw him. uh on these uh on the bottom of these leaderboards and um at marty dobrow oh uh, yeah a guest of the show he did i think he said the same thing to me he told me like well i he i hear that uh brett Beatty is your uh is your player to watch they, they got to bring <laughs> him up eduardo escobar is just not doing uh is not doing well at all right now and then i you know i was searching for uh for players today and he he was right at the bottom you know right at the top of the bottom or whatever, like whenever you look at the, yep. uh, the uh, ascending order of, you know, average on base percentage OPS, he was there. And uh, Eduardo Escobar is hitting 103 with a 348 OPS and a negative six OPS plus. Out of 196 qualifiers this season, his bad end average is second worst. On base percentage is the worst. OPS is fourth worst. Weighted runs created plus is third worst. 
Um, also, his expected batting average and expected slugging are ninth and seventh percentile, respectively. And his average exit velocity and expected WOBA are fifth and fourth percentile, respectively. His sweet spot rate is 23.3%, which is 22nd lowest out of 204 hitters with 25 plus batted balls this year. You know, bottom 12 ish percent on a sweet spot rate. Sweet spot rate is a, it's the launch angle between eight and 32 degrees and hitters slug over a thousand when they, uh, when they hit it in that sweet spot rate. Eduardo Escobar has been avoiding that, uh, unfortunately with how he's been hitting the ball. Um, Escobar's line drive rate is also 13.3%, which is 17th lowest out of 204. And, you know, looking at his numbers, I found that Eduardo Escobar has always had a very high chase rate, but this year it is especially high at 37.9%, which is uh, highest of his career so far. And it is in the 12th percentile in all of baseball. Um, And, you know, as we mentioned, small sample size. This is called slightly alarming, but he has the highest strikeout rate and the lowest walk rate of his career so far, um, or at least in the Statcast era. I didn't look back um, before 2015, but I don't know. I don't know if his career went before that. But uh, Eduardo Escobar, um, third baseman for the Mets, he is getting a slightly alarming. Um, all right, so uh, that does it for players to highlight. And, uh, yeah, we'll get into a preview of the weekend ahead. Yes. For the first time ever. Well, first time of this year. Um, That's true. First time this year we're previewing the weekend. Uh, I'll be looking at series to watch. Daniel will be looking at the day-by-day pitching matchups. Um, there's there's some decent series to look at. I mean, at this point in the year, there's no real actual basement dwellers. Yeah, no. Like, you know, th- and there are some teams that are like, you know they're going to do good at some point, but they're not doing well right now. Like the, like the Cardinals. Like the Cardinals, like the Mariners right now. Yeah, the Padres um, are 7-7. Seven and seven. Yeah, like, you know, everyone everyone's kind of at the same spot, except for a few exceptions, like the Tigers and the and the Rays. Um, but uh, with series to watch, uh, Yankees-Twins in the Bronx. Uh, the Twins uh, reversed the curse officially yesterday. <laughs> they... <laughs> they uh, Won what eleven to two or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they scored nine runs in the first inning. It was crazy, by the way. Not to get off track here, but I was, I was, um, I had my, I was doing a desk shift for Mass Live, where I basically have to pull put in uh, stats for these high school sports games, and I had just gotten my uh, what I had to eat, so I was, I had MLB TV on my, my, uh, I had my desk which is facing away from my TV, so you know. I left, got my food, went to my desk. It was zero to zero. And then I was like in, in the midst of doing work and, and eating and stuff. <laughs> I look back up at seven to nothing. I'm like, wait, what? It's still the first inning. <laughs> it was pretty nuts uh, yesterday. But the Yankees will look at, look to get back on track. It's a four-game series. The Twins won game one. Um, Blue Jays' Rays is the series to watch. No doubt. Um, Blue Jays, you know, they could break the streak. But if they don't. That'll be pretty That's, crazy yeah. if the Rays go 16-0 and 0 and we're still talking about them. Um, Astros-Rangers, uh, that'll, that'll be cool. Astros have been, gotten That's off That's the to Sunday night game, I believe. Pro- yeah, I think so. Um, Astros-Rangers, like, Astros have been kind of underperforming slightly. They did last year, too, though. Uh, to start the year. Yeah, I'm not worried about it, necessarily. Yeah. Uh, Rangers have been, seven, you know, they're 7-5 and five right now. So, you know, good uh, AL West action. And then the last series that uh, is interesting to me is Padres Brewers. Brewers took Game One last night. Um, probably some good pitching matchups in there as well. Both teams have uh, some good staffs. So, all right. So, uh, who are um, what, what, what are we looking at for day by day matchups? So on Apple TV tonight, we have a pair of my players to watch in a 2012 World Series rematch. Absolute fierce competition between the Giants and Tigers. Sean Manaya versus Joey Wentz tonight. Uh, by the way, if you are a lover of offense, Friday and Saturday are your days to watch because there are 
barely any good pitchers going <laughs> on Friday, Saturday. Uh, I'll try to, you know, I'll try to name the best. On Friday, uh, Trevor Rogers is going for the Marlins. He'll be facing Madison Baumgartner of the Diamondbacks, who's like the one guy that should not be in that rotation that is still there. Yeah. Uh, Cal Quantrill will be facing the Nationals tonight for the Guardians. Um, Nestor Cortez will be pitching for the Yankees tonight against the Twins. Drew Rasmussen and Jose Barrios will be facing each other in Rays Blue Jays. Uh, Martin Perez and Luis Garcia are facing each other in Rangers Astros. Charlie Morton and Brady Singer in Braves Royals. Uh, Johan Oviedo will be facing the Cardinals for the Pirates in uh, Cardinals Pirates at St. Louis. Oviedo's actually looked pretty good this year. He's a former Cardinal. Uh, Kodai Senga, who's also looked excellent, is going to be going in Oakland against uh, James Caprillion and the A's. Eric Lauer and Michael Waka will be facing each other in Brewers Padres. That series kicked off last night. It was a good one. Uh, Justin Steele and Noah Syndergaard will be facing each other in Cubs Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. Austin Gomber and Marco Gonzalez in Rockies Mariners at T-Mobile Park. And matchup of the night, I guess, comes from Angels Red Sox. It's going to be Patrick Sandoval versus Tanner Houck. Hmm. Tanner Houck has looked like the only decent pitcher in the Red Sox rotation, and I think everyone knows how good Patrick Sandoval is at this point. Um, and then on Saturday, I'm kind of just looking here to see if we have a definitive matchup of the night. Um, not really. <laughs> we really don't, I'm going to be honest. All right, I'm just going to go with that one, I guess. Um... In Twins Yankees, you have Tyler Malley and Domingo Herman facing each other. You have Michael Kopech facing the Orioles for the White Sox in guaranteed right field. You have Roan Sneak Contreras versus Steven Matz in Pirates Cardinals. You're going to have Freddie Peralta and Seth Lugo facing each other in Brewers Padres. You're going to have Tyler Anderson and Nick Pavetta facing each other in Angels Red Sox. Uh, Shintaro Fujinami will be facing the Mets uh, in Oakland. Matt Strom and Graham Ashcraft will face each other. Matt Strom is not allowed to run this year. Normally a reliever, but he's been starting this year, and he's been very impressive. Uh, Ryan Nelson and Braxton Garrett will be going against each other in Diamondbacks Marlins, a couple of younger pitchers trying to you know make it. Uh, and George Kirby will be going for the Mariners against the Rockies. Matchup of the night comes from Rangers Astros, John Gray versus Hunter Brown. Yeah. Kind yeah. of the best one we have. Yeah. And then lastly, on Sunday, this is, you know, I promise you, this is a much better day, uh, you know, generally speaking. So you have Logan Webb uh, and Matt Boyd facing each other in uh, Giants-Tigers. Reed Detmers and Garrett Whitlock in Angels-Red Sox. You will have Shane Bieber and Patrick Corbin going against each other in Guardians-Nationals. Uh, you will have Shane McClanahan and Alec Manoa. Uh, my, you know, previously mentioned slightly alarming in Rays Blue Jays, Aaron Nola and Luis Sessa in Phillies Reds. Oh, that's matchup of the night. Uh, Pablo Lopez and Garrett Cole in the finale of Twins Yankees. Uh, Kyle Wright and Zach Greinke in Braves Royals. Gray Rod, Grayson Rodriguez and Dylan Cease in Orioles White Sox. 